Hey guys, Corey here, Mad Rack Garage. Welcome back to the shop. Our new project, 1956 Chevy Nomad. It's been in my family for 40 plus years. It was my mom's car back in Wisconsin, where we're from. She used to drive it every day during the summer to work. They moved to Florida, they brought it with them. I bought it seven years ago, took it back to Indiana, had it there for a couple of years. Never had the time to really get it right, having some uh, carburetor issues. And uh, one day in traffic, I had to do a hot emergency stop. And these brakes do not, do not work with in modern traffic. No matter how much you try to give yourself enough room, somebody always wants to cut in front of you and take that room away. And I had to do a hot stop and locked up all four tires, basically. And uh, he pulled so hard to the left, it's actually a good thing that I swerved around the person who braked in front of me. Freaked me out, didn't like it. I never liked all drum brakes. Old school booster on this with a single suicide master. And one of those two things has finally taken a dump. So we're gonna go modern, disc brakes, dual reservoir, modern booster, a little more usability, a little more uh, safe in traffic nowadays, and just better drivability. There's the box of goodness. We're gonna do some unboxing, get them all set up out here. Come back, take a look, see what we got. My channel's about making things cool as inexpensively as possible, but yet still having good quality stuff. So I'll show you what I got here, and uh, maybe it'll help one of you guys as that said. Uh, often thought your brakes weren't quite good enough on your Tri-5, but you didn't want to spend an ungodly amount just updating your brakes. This kit, I think, delivered with shipping and everything was, uh, tax and everything was like $775. And that is, we're also getting two inch drop spindles with it. So new two inch drop spindles and single piston calipers. Don't need anything else. We're not auto tracking this. We're just daily driving it. And uh, drilled and slotted rotors, new wheel bearings. Uh, new new lines for the front, new master, new proportioning valve, new booster, the bracket set up to, to hook the booster up to the firewall. Yeah, I think that's all of it. So let me get to unboxing and I'll come back and show you what we got. All right, guys, here we go. So new seals, new hoses, bearing kit. These are our two inch drop spindles. These are our slotted and drilled rotors. Come with the races in them, which is nice. You don't have to pound them in. Very good, very good. New master, it looks like a Corvette style. Pretty common. And we're running an eight inch booster. Got two calipers. These are not remands. Looks like it's probably a truck caliper, it's pretty common. I'm loaded with brakes and this is our uh, portioning valve and pigtail lines that come out of here for the portioning valve and then I've got another box um, I don't have room for it over here that's got the lines in it so looks like pretty good stuff yeah let's try five style bracket for the booster and uh, the rod for the master to the pedal first things first we'll go ahead and get this guy this gal Rockstar, get her up. All right. Uh, I don't have to take any of this apart. I'm gonna take it off as a unit. So you can unhook the tie rod in and uh, loosen the ball joints, leaving a thread on. And we're gonna hammer them, break that taper. And then I got some jack stands. We'll have to raise the vehicle up and get the jack stands underneath there. Pull, pull jacks for in a lift. We'll put some pressure on the bottom so that they don't go shooting out and kill me with spray. <laughs> Cotter pins out, tie rod off, loosen up them ball joints, nuts. Get the hammer, do it. That, that is an original ball joint. I can tell because it's still riveted in. 
that bottom one is uh, bolted in, so that might have been replaced at one time. Not sure how these go. Those of you wondering why I don't use a pickle fork, because I am not replacing these. They are in still perfect shape. Maybe I will be replacing these. Finally. Really? <laughs> it dropped. Trust me, it dropped. Not dropping anymore. What I did get was all the threads blasted out of it. That sucker's in there good. I ain't never had a tie rod end fight me that hard. Maybe because it's from 1956. <laughs> it's just decided it don't want to let go of its spindle. The next day. I haven't had one of these. I haven't really ever needed one. Let's see how well this works. Doesn't seem to fit on there great. Ah. Slick! With all that loosening up I did on it the, uh, yesterday. <laughs> right, right. Sure. I don't want to jinx it, but lower than that, that gap. Me like that ball joint's working its way out. The only one I'm really gonna have to worry about is that one. So that one needs to be jacked up on to get that out. Oh this one. Usually I pound it now. Spring pressure pushing down. Usually causes that one to pop. You'll get a whoop. Me, the more I loosen it, yep, the gap's getting bigger, which tells me the taper's already busted. Not busted, just the taper itself has been unseated, unbroken. This one doesn't seem to be doing that, so that boot under there is still good, and I guarantee these are original. That boot still looks good. And the play, when I grab this, do this, there's no play. There's no reason to change these guys. Thing with this, some of this original equipment, man, um, they built stuff to last. They didn't build in obsolescence, you know, because uh, nowadays stuff lasts a couple years and it goes to hell. Why? Because they want you to buy it again. They, it's the only way the rich stay rich, right? Keep buying my stuff i'll make junk and make you keep buying it it's the best junk you can buy that but this 1956 the rubber boot still looks good are you kidding me ah craziness that one's still riveted in That rubber boot 
but still perfect. Tight as can be. And not seized up tight. I mean, just tolerance tight. All right, well, I changed camera views. Must not have hit play with my greasy fingers. Must not have. I thought I did. But we got her out. Um, used this. Had to move a few things around that get over here out of the way so I could hammer this up in and uh, get it underneath that cup. And as you can see, these are the rubber boots, the rubber cups. Hard to see with all the grease on them, but um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not even hard. It's uh, firm, but it ain't hard. So this has got no play in it. It's a little on the loose side, but because I squeezed all the grease out of it. There is no up and down. There is no side to side clatter. It's just nice fit that one's more perfect and I got to take these two nuts this arm that goes to the uh, tie rod end comes off and gets bolted on to the new one of course that ain't a stud remember see how bad my I got a bad memory when it comes to stuff I do a project guys see uh Tell me, if you, tell me down below, guys. Comment down below if you guys are like this. I want to know if I'm just crazy. So I, I work on a project, and if it's something I don't know anything about, or even if it's something I just, I'm figuring out as I go along, I can be an expert on that project by the time I'm done. And if you put another vehicle in front of me to do the exact same thing, I could do it like I've done a million. But I walk away from that project when I'm done, and I go do another project, it's like my brain compartmentalizes everything I just learned. Like in a computer, puts it all in a file and sets it somewhere else. And now I'm learning the new thing and compartmentalizing all of that stuff. And then I go back to that same project that I was an expert at, the last project. Um, but four or five years later, I'm like, um, I don't remember how to do this. But once you get going, and once you get doing things, then it's like, oh, there's that file with all the info. <laughs> you guys like that too, or is it just me? Maybe I'm a crazy. I don't know. It's starting to come back. Front wheels, I believe. Brake drum's part of the hub. Here we go. back wheels this just pops off on other vehicles that one just pops off you don't have to mess with the bearing slowly remembering this and this is all one piece yep. like I said guys everything's all brand new in there I just did that like seven years ago when I first got the car dad did the brakes including one of those 10 years prior to that you know um it's sad that it's so brand new i was keeping this oh i don't like these bonded ones but i was keeping it i'd, I'd, I'd redo these bonded ones when they get old now you go to heat cycle them; they've aged they're 15 17 years old when you start heat cycling them the bonding can let loose and these pads can come off. Seen it happen, not on a personal project, but another project that a, a buddy, I helped a buddy work on and uh, got it running and driving and, and uh, you know, check the brakes and they were all good. Nothing leaking, plenty of pad. And uh, within a week, he had no brakes, pull it off. And these things were just spinning around in there, flopping around and tearing, tearing everything up. I don't mind it on the back so much. You're still gonna lose some brake pedal. But uh, I'll risk it on the back ones. You don't have as much braking force. Everything in the front is going to be brand new with the discs. Those two, and that one. All right. 
Look at these already. Just a couple of times I drove it. Cracked. Why is that showing up on camera? Starts here. Oh, starts here. Goes all the way through. About there. Big crack. That's from the heat cycling. I drove it, like I said, to a partial. That was about 20 miles away, up in Indiana. And then a buddy of mine, good friend of mine, his daughter was getting married. And they didn't want to rent a limo. She wanted to be taken around in a cool old, a cool old car. And she wanted my 64 Chevy pickup. She loved that. And I said, no. If you're not used to driving old cars, I ain't having you on your wedding day drive around. I'll show it for you. And I'll do it in the wagon. She saw the wagon. She says, you that? I said, yeah, sure. Why not? So I chauffeured them around. It was real cool. It was a fun day. And uh, the brakes worked great. Just, you know, they are what they are. But that's one day, probably two separate occasions. Cracked them old. And at that point, they were probably 12 years old, 10, 12 years old. Well, Dad put in all the new pieces because they were probably shot in there. New adjuster, the whole bit. So, yeah, it's too bad. Somebody may need these components. Backing the spindle, who knows, for their project that they're working on. But that would all keep them. I'll take it to the swap meet. There's a lot of the, the pieces inside and this whole piece. And this has, doesn't need to be turned. You know, it's good, and, it's good to go. Somebody might need that. Just never know. Probably get more for it at the scrap. I don't know what in the hell is going on with my camera. That whole thing did not record. I sandblasted it. <laughs> we'll try this again. I sandblasted it. Looked really good on camera. I showed it to you and everything. And then it wasn't recording. I need to get a better setup. But, uh... Little two time coat, rust oleum stuff's getting expensive nowadays. Might have to go to something cheaper, but does a good job making black suspension parts. Rebuilt like new. I'm not going to overdo this because there's all undercoating in here and it's always going to look rough. Well, peeling that all down to nothing so. I am just gonna go over it with a brush. Little $2 Harbor Freight steel wire brush. I'm just gonna knock down anything loose. Just sort of quick glance through those wheels. There isn't a, uh, there isn't a noticeable crud. This is gonna be Tina Survivor. Ow! Oh, that tickled. Tina Survivor Nomad. That uh, probably every tripod guy out there is going to hate. <laughs> Tina is in, but that don't mean people like it. But I do like my stuff looking clean. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like it looked like it was been taken after, taken care of, even though the paint's bad and it maybe got a couple of little rust spots. Doesn't mean you have to be a junker. And I even like those, but it's not my style. How about a little Corey's Corner, a little Rambletron. So. My outlook on things, since I could drive. I mean, there was times when I was a kid, I had a, well, I mean, we had a somewhat nice car. Always had a hot rod. And they weren't always perfect. Far from it. We didn't drive them in the winter down up in Wisconsin because the salt on the roads just takes what you got. And the next year you're fighting against Russell. 
even if we parked them outside, we parked them before the first snow, um, before the salt hit the ground, and then we'd wait till the street sweepers went through once or twice in the spring, cleaning up any salt dust that was left on the road with the sand and all that from sanding the roads all, all winter long. That meant we always had $50, $200 winter beaters. Something you could you could buy for 50 to 200 bucks that would get you from home to work, from work to the bar, once you're old enough, from the bar back home. That was it. There was no going on trips. There was no going nothing. Because you had your nice car that you did that in the summer with, and you had your winter. I had friends that still treated their winter beaters like garbage, which a lot of people do. Why? why it's a rusty, beat down, $200 pile of crap. I still washed mine every couple weeks because I didn't like the look of the salt dust and the mud and grime on it. I still kept it vacuumed and all the trash on it. Um, I didn't let McDonald's bags pile up in the seat and on the floor. So at least that way, if I had to take a girl out in my winter beater, they didn't get in and go, oh, gross. It's a $200 beater, but at least it's the nicest $200 beater you can have. Looks like you at least try to keep nice Whatever it is you own, keep it as nice as you possibly can within your means. That's my philosophy, Ramble Toronto. So with this, I don't like the bare metal surface rust look on this stuff. It shows through the wheels. You have a nice set of shiny wheels, nice brand new rotors. And then you look around and there's brown staring at you. If you darken up the wheel well, get rid of the flaky flakies, darken up the wheel well, it doesn't stand out at you. You gotta stick your head there and look, you're gonna be like, ew, whatever. But you have to make an effort for that. Whereas this, if you're just driving around or parked, people look at it, they notice the wheels, they look at everything else. Big brown, crusty, dirty wheel well, A arms ain't staring back at you saying, look at me, look at my big rusty ugliness. Now look at the, everything else that's purposely there. And all it takes a few minutes time. Not doing a big high dollar paint job. We're just getting in here. And basically making them disappear. But ain't that already so much better? What an improvement. See, another thing about that philosophy, guys, is if you didn't see it before, you can't tell what I did. Remember that. So nobody's going to know to look for it. You guys will. You see what I did? I'll know. I'm the one who did it. You go to a car show. People just look at the car. They don't know what you do. They don't look at all. Oh, look at you did that. They don't know. Unless they watch the video. Like and subscribe if you watch the video. <laughs> all right. This tie rod end. A little bit of play in it. And the boot is ugly. I will have to look into getting those. I wasn't planning on replacing that stuff. That one feels all right. This one's got a little. It, it's fine. It's little bit of play in it for the tri fives they're about double the price um not always about money i do like budget but i am budget builder yeah they didn't send the hardware so i'm gonna put it all together but i'm gonna have to go from source the hardware for this unbelievable i'll have to take the other one with me to uh figure out what threads it is You can see these drop spindles because another one would have been right here. It was two inches. Two inches, man. Two inches. Should sit nice. I like things slammed. Don't get me wrong. But really what I like is a perfect stance. You don't have to lower it when you get somewhere. You don't have to raise it up above your perfect stance to be able to drive it. 
You just want that perfect stance. And for me, that is the smallest gap in the wheel well. We had four and a half inches or so. I mean, you could go like this between the wheel and this, that's too much. I think I'm gonna have like two fingers between the top of the tire and the uh, wheel well. So that'll look good. Because the back on these naturally have a lower wheel well, which covers a little bit of the tire. So having a big gap up here, even though it was dead level, having a big gap up here while the back has got a nice covering in the wheel well, just always to me looked like the 56s were doing a wheelie, um, gasser style. And whenever you get that fender just right above the tire, man, you can't beat that. Looks fantastic. Okay, so next thing is we're gonna jack it up. I want as much leverage on this as I can get. Scared the shit out of me. I don't like how this is lifting it. It's lifting the whole car. And this is down on the bump stop. Now it's starting to lift the car. I can feel it coming off the jack. I've never had this problem. Usually you do this and it goes right up in there way before it ever starts wanting to lift the car. And this, it feels like it's lifting the car the whole damn time. I was doing it with the original one too. It's not just the spindle. My little tie the frame to the lift so the frame and the body don't lift allowed me to get more leverage on this and counteract the spring. Never ran into that before, but I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there who are like, yep, yeah, that's exactly what you got to do. I was yelling at the screen the whole time. Tie the car off to the lift. Give it some pressure. Never had springs that were that strong, I guess. But this is a big old passenger car. So, one reason why they ride so good. It does line up. to get to it I guess Good choice now ah, that was the last coat of paint on that I don't care what that looks like nobody's gonna see that other than that little nub sticking out but it's all covered in grease and grime and everything and it'll just flash rust and look like hell so I'll just put a couple of coats on it so she lasts and holds up all right so shouldn't have anything else other than to get those bolts from the other one didn't have to do anything else I can put this together or pack them. This happens a lot. Didn't hear on this one if it has to be done or not. Wasn't mentioned. Usually this bearing, back side of the rotor, don't fit. Ooh, that one's really close. Oh, we might be all right. Good deal. I don't have to uh, hand machine it. That one works. Good. We'll pack these. Yeah, yeah, I know. Grease in the hand. Filler pack. Ah. Old school. 
I like this because I can just keep my grease in there. Easy to refill. Showed this before in one of my other videos, but for all you new viewers, look down in there, there's a bunch of holes. Yeah, holes. This is a grease cert. I can fill this through that if I want. Or I can just weasel this thing back out, which isn't easy once it's got grease on it. It creates quite a suction. But uh and fill this whenever. Um get a tube of grease. But see the holes down in there all the way around. Take your bearing. See, there's no grease in those. Those are dry. Set it in there. Taper down. Take this and screw it down until it's tight. And you can do this. Just kind of wiggle it around back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Put all your weight on it. I'm a fat kid, so. Here. Now you can see what's in between all the bearings. Grease. Just in between them all. Now, my problem with doing the dabba 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 <laughs> is that I'm never 100% convinced that I've gotten it all the way through. I mean, that is all the way through. Obviously, you can see the grease here, so I mean, they can do this and grease all the way on there, right? I ain't about getting grease. I don't give craps about that. Now I can turn it, right? Spreads the grease out on that race there. And then I just, I I do it different every time. I just, I, I, until I feel confident that I got myself That's good. That's real good. All right? See it in there? Really coming up. It's already been spun, so it's all around all the sides. And uh, I'll set that set that right in there like that. That's one that's going in anyways. I just feel more confident that uh, my bearings are packed correctly. Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Just sharing with you mine. Um, part number on here, but OEM tools, right? Really hard, thick case. Um, durable. I stand on it. Sometimes I've stood. I've stood on it. Um, really gets the grease up in there. So this is just its cover. Keeps everything all nice and out of the way, not smelling. I'm about to do to add some more grease to it, but it just beats the mess of having a can or squirting out of your grease gun. Um, I buy synthetic axle grease. That's what I fill that with. Lucas, if I can get it. Uh, I'll shoot it in with a grease gun. I've had this probably, I don't know, Eight, nine years. I've never filled it because I mean, who does? It was probably up to here uh, originally. Whatever this is was sitting where the green cap is now. So uh, it was probably half full. Lasts a long time. Always have it. It's always around. So. That's my tool tip for the week. Nice thing about these rotors. The races are already installed, so we don't have to pound any races in or anything like that. Good. Those will set right in there nice. And then I soft mallet. Red side on this is the soft side. He started nicely. Get one side in and then coerce it gently.
that always goes down. And kind of do it level if you can. I don't have a sealant installer. Probably need to buy one. There it goes. Here. Here, change. That is, I'm seated. So that side is good. I'll break clean. Back side. I already pre-tested it. I know that that bearing will go. There it goes. There's always some little extra bearings you just did. I don't know why. It don't really matter. Then it's first. I like to put obviously on the race, but scratch some off in the back. This is a highly updated tactic because everybody's like, well, who cares? Got grease back in there. Well, I think of it this way. You toss a bearing, a bearing's starting to go bad to heat up. You're gonna have some extra grease hanging out in the middle in there. That'll kind of get liquefied and may or may not splash and help that bearing make the rest of the trip where you can get it fixed. Might be squealing, might be howling, but it might not seize up because of that extra gook you put in there, right? Just a theory, and it don't hurt nothing. I don't put a guy. I don't put a ton of it in there. Some people put. They just pack it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that either. Packing it full can create. And here's where the argument comes in. If you pack it full, it can create pressure. There is heat built up in here, especially under hard braking, long trips, and you don't necessarily want. There'll be so much grease packed in there that one, it can't distribute the heat. Two, it starts to liquefy and push out the bearings, which under pressure can prematurely wear the bearings. Out. I had an old guy tell me that. I don't know if I believe it. The bearings, once they spin, there's air can travel in and out from both sides. I mean, the one side's sealed, this side's kind of sealed. You know, you put the dust cap on here, there really isn't much going anywhere. So I don't know if I believe that, but I do believe having some in linear. Is definitely a good thing and it don't hurt i don't i don't see the benefit of packing it if that's what your thing is um but hey if that makes you feel better just know the possibility creating pressure in there <laughs> here's another argument for you. What's the proper way to set that? I've read instructions for the kit that we bought from my brother Chevelle that said keep tightening that until this don't spin no more like it's tight and then back it off a quarter turn. I don't know if I believe that. Never done that. Then again, we, I am dealing with completely brand new everything. I like to do it till you get a little drag like that. Back it off. It's about a quarter turn, but see how loose that seems? And then you get that. Some more spin. seated now oh yeah it's feeling better free spin 
And guys, again, we're perfectly clear. I'm not a certified mechanic. I'm not an expert. I just play when I need to. This is what I've done for years. And I've yet to have a problem. Just kind of go by feel on it. It's a little tight. Back a little bit. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's the spot. And I'll go back and check them. Um, drive it for a day. Check them. See what it feels like. Or jack on the lift, whatever. But to me, that's pretty good. Wait to put the cap and the cotter pin in last. All right, so that, that cylinder, the piston, is uh, set out. So I got this neat little tool. I don't know if it'll fit in there with the pad in there or not. Sometimes it do, sometimes it don't. It does. There you go. Just a little ratchet. That'll push it back. All the way. It's either direction. It's a nice little deal. Got that on Amazon. It's funny, I borrowed one from the guys next door. And he had a snap-on one. Said, hey, that's pretty slick. He's like, yeah, Snap on guys here. If you want one? I'll talk to them. It's like $180. I went on Amazon. I kid you not, this thing's about the same quality. Um theirs was that cheap feeling. This is okay. I mean, but it for 180 bucks that felt cheap. 25 bucks. 25 bucks. Awesome tool pushing back pistons in all of your calipers or your tool corner. I think somebody put these pads on the wrong side. These pads have a wear indicator. I ain't getting up through there and sitting. But it'll sit down here. Which means that the ones on the other pad... Now these are probably made in China, for God's sakes. And the little Chinese guy, don't give a shit about left or right. They're both that way. If they do them, just screw them up. Yeah, there is no way they're backwards. A few moments later. God, I hate, I hate that springs. They don't stay on, they don't stay in. I got that on the bottom. Oh, useless. What I'm talking about when I say effing spring, you got these stupid springs that stay inside the, the piston. And look, they got to stretch out over that, but they got nothing holding them other than tension. And one little move, they pop and everything goes flying, as you just saw. No way to hold them in place is you got to let go. to the back with your thumb, but you know, you have really good dexterity doing that. You hear it? Sucker just popped again. One little bump and the sucker come flying apart. 
This was a better way. Gotta let go of it eventually. Finally. <laughs> Hot rotten's fun! That's good. Then looks good. Looks good. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, you ain't going to go around the corner with that much room. Hey, isn't that nice? Can you see it? Oh, so what do I do? Do I channel this out? A spindle? I don't think so. I'm gonna have to round the corner and not take so much that the bolt gets where the bolt goes is loose. See, there's not a whole lot of material there. There's enough. There's enough. See where it's bumping? Here it's getting the mark on there. I have to start just before that mark. All the way around. Probably to about here. Make this level. Up. Over. <laughs> the pot rodding was easy. Everyone would be doing it. Nowhere does it say anywhere. Well, it didn't even come with instructions. But the online description didn't say, Oh, you might have to trim your lower A-arm. Probably a nomad thing. Be honest. It always says 55 through 7 Chevy Bel Airs. And then you go through descriptions and it says, oh, Nomads, but you know, on what it fits, Nomads would be included. But it always says uh, four door Nomad wagons. There's never made a four door Nomad wagon, a tripod. Nomads always a two door. So you just wonder what they know and they don't, what they don't know. The problem solving part of it, isn't it? So, good thing I didn't put the brake hose on because I was going to do that next. I could take this whole dish kebab off just by um, taking the spindle off. It'd be nice if I could just take the bottom off. I think that's possible. i to take the top and the bottom. So. And then do a little shavy shavy. I'm sick times. Yeah, problem solving so we like. So. All right, I'm done for the day. Sometimes it takes the wind right out of you. It's a good thing, though. It's, I had about a half hour left tonight, and I had to be done, so... I get done a half hour early, right? Just more work tomorrow. I think I have an opportunity to come in a little early tomorrow, so... Do that. Get that trimmed. Figure it out. Then I'll know what to do on the other side. Yes, sir! Till tomorrow, guys. The next day... Another day. Yeah. Show you what we gotta go through every time we come into work. <laughs> I don't have a light switch on this side of the building. <laughs> a little dark in here. Uh, I'll leave that light on so I can at least not trip over and break my neck. I'm gonna walk all the way to the back side. Oh, that's better. Back in the shop. 
I'm gonna come over for your benefit. <laughs> when I gotta do a little filming. There's cheap eBay. Amazon. There you go. Oh, hopefully you can hear me better. Yep, we're back on this. Yeah, you know good paint and all that stuff, black works. This is just like a black hole cave now. Can't even see it. Before it was just gray and rusty, crusty stuff looking out at you. Now it's just black as night. It's what we're going for. That way, when the wheel's on here, you just don't see that stuff shining. All right. Another day back in the shop. Get after that. And I guess my uh, first order of business is to take that off or figure out a way to get the bottom off and lift it up. Probably just take the whole damn thing back off. Gave that AR. So i scratch a couple of lines on it and uh, figure out exactly how much we got to take. So I'm not putting this thing on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. I want to do it hopefully in one shot. Hot rod. Got a few extra, a few extra minutes today as long as nothing else happens or calls or distracts me all right guys let's get after it all right first thing i'm gonna do i tie this frame back down i need to jack this up get it kind of at ride height and see how much is still rubbing because sitting on the ground might be different than what it is right now which is obvious right don't want it to a couple of big bumps and when it unloads here if you're in a corner it bind up or break something so no matter what we're gonna have to shave it but i might not have to shave it as much because this is an extreme droop so, that's what i'm doing first A lot more room. That hits the steering stop there. Not better. So I think what I'm going to do, for well, explanation purposes, this bolts on like this, right? On the back side. Steering, high rod, and we took off. See this? This hits a bracket on this side, which stops the steering from going too far. Okay, we're into that, no problem. It actually stops a little short of this. So we're good. We got plenty of room there. That seems, yeah, that seems like a little bit of a stop there. There's no steering stop on this side because the other wheel has the same thing, and then this hits. When it comes this way, that side hits. We don't need a steering stop on both sides. Just both sides of the vehicle, one on each side, not one here and one here. So we're good, we got tons of room there. But like I said, I don't wanna get in a situation where we've got, you're in some whoops or whatever and the suspension drops down and gets caught or hung up on something. So I'm still, Gonna take some of this out because it's a little overkill. It hits right here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this line up and over to here. And then same thing on this side. See it hits. I'm just gonna take this up over a bit see where it hits right here so i'm just going to shave that out flatten that down a little bit take that part out that should eliminate any weird rubbing see we got tons of room now it's getting into here but Is 
is made of some thick ass metal. There's, this is hitting the lower, and that is more probably more than enough. Let's lower it. See what we get. that'll do it yeah a little tight there but this is full extension guys like jumping a railroad track I can get full extension all the way I can get full turn all the way but it gets tight right there to there tight right there to there so we ain't ever gonna have oh Just touch and ever so slightly there. We are good on this side. Happy with that. What I did forget to do is take the spindle with me to get the bolts to bolt that steering arm on. So then I'll have to run over to Home Depot or something and uh, see if I can find at least some grade five. All right, made it back from the hardware store. And they only had grade eight, you know, that was inflation the way it is and two dollars a bolt ridiculous no biggie it is what it is got to do what you got to do right so got four of them two for each side let me go ahead and put the steering shaft on here and uh, we'll get back at it The other problem, hopefully, isn't going to go its ugly head. They only had size that only get uh, two threads in. We're kind of long. Go with the longer one. Just hoping it doesn't shoot out on this side and rub on the rotor. Flush. Good. Still got a. And obviously, this configuration isn't going to be exactly like the old one. This wheel now is turning in and the other one is straight. So we're going to need to get an alignment. You always hope you don't have to. You always hope the stuff's going to land right where, it's, where it did before. And you might have to change the toe in or something like that because it just drops it into... It doesn't always work out that way. Definitely the proper caliper. Here's why. In case you ain't ever stamped left or right always have the bleeder on top. There you go. Those of you that don't know. Now, that being said, a little foot here that this line sits in. You keep telling me that it goes that direction? Why would it go that direction? It should come out here and go here. I'm not a fan. So I'm wrong. I'm not a fan. Backwards. I mean, that's just stupid. I'm trying to avoid this. But... The worst one is sitting down, too, because it's going to push us up. 
Can't say I'm a fan. I know what you guys think. Overthinking it? I mean, it's, not, it's barely touching. It's just, but it's touching. Interesting to say the least. Well, I think about it. I don't think this is the same kid he used on my dad. My brothers. I think we went through the inline tube. There's a sold out right now. This is another company that I have used in the past for things I could find. Just little tweaks that I'm not a huge fan of. But again, not spending two thousand dollars on Willwood, you know, it's be more than enough as long as it works. Seems like it's no reason it shouldn't. Wish the caliper was a different design where the uh, hose comes out. No, if I look at this other one, yeah, we'll have to get her out, drive her around. Doesn't drop much, doesn't go up much. It does, I mean, compared to what it was. But, uh, gotta get that that suspension settled. But what a difference. Wheels look better. Well, guys, that's all we got time for this week. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, get more notifications if you like this content. Uh, part two is gonna be working underneath the hood, getting the, uh, the booster and the master all set up, the pedal hooked up. Um, got some carb issues I've got to deal with and some fuel line running a fuel line and uh, a couple other alterations we're going to do in the next one converting from a generator to an alternator and uh, yeah just some freshening up and updating things to make her a reliable cruiser so appreciate you stopping by comment down below if uh, you, you, you know something that uh, I did wrong or I should have did different or you got a better way of doing something or you have any questions about the kit comment down below Right now, I'm a small enough channel. I uh, I respond to all comments. So, all right, guys, don't forget. Don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy. Do a little something. Get her out. Drive her around. Have fun with it. Get her back in the shop. Do the next project. That's that keeps you motivated. All right. Till next time. Keep wrenching.